I'm making this as an extension to my career, my recent video on uh, report on foreign men uh, dating Korean women and so on and so forth. Uh, there were a lot of uh, comments reflecting what I believe was misunderstanding uh, and some rather odd ones. One very common one was, I shouldn't just focus on Korea, I should focus on everything. I imagine there were many newcomers there to my channel. Uh, since I do focus on everything, I was specifically talking about that report. Now in this video, I want to further extend what I was talking about, and I want to get into greater depth. In order to do that, I need to uh, talk about something first, namely uh, tribalism. Uh, we... Once again, racism to me is a bit of a misnomer because racism to me is simply a reflection of tribalism. Now, what is tribalism? Tribalism is a uh, an ancient or by rather proto-ancient function of humanity when we were still living in caves and very close-knit groups of people and families. Uh, the tribe would adhere to one another. And uh, tribalism has, uh, since then, been with us. Uh, it has been with us uh, largely unchanged. Tribalism first uh, manifests itself mostly in regard to direct uh, kin, that is, uh, your allegiance to your direct genetic blood. That's where tribalism uh, finds its first manifestation. But the second best manifestation, in my observation, uh, has always been uh, those of your so-called own race. That is to say, people not directly your kin of your, of your blood, but uh, you know, those, of, those people who may or may not have the uh, requisite DNA to mimic your own skin pigmentation, a facial structure, or otherwise. So that's sort of the next best thing to the monster of tribalism. And you might ask me why I'm mentioning this. Well, it's quite clear that uh, in, in Korean society, that's this notion of racism towards foreigners, this is a manifestation of that uh, kind of tribalism. The, the second step in tribalism, not the direct tribalistic allegiance to kin and clan uh, based on direct bloodlines or uh, genetic affiliation, but the uh, desire to affiliate with uh, those uh, who are perceived to be uh, by dint of uh, similar, similar, similar physical features and what have you, similar to you. However, tribalism does get more complicated. I don't want to get too much into it, but I do want to express the point that tribalism goes well beyond merely the genetic or kin, clan, and blood. Nationalism is nothing more than a more modern form of tribalism, adherence to your own tribe, only in this case the tribe is your country, your nation. Um, another kind of tribalism can be found in religious, religion, religious fundamentalism. Extreme nationalism, religious fundamentalism both have that in common. And I think if you actually think about the idea of uh, party loyalty and loyalty to certain so-called political principles. So, for example, the in the West, or particularly in the United States, the constant bickering between the so-called right and the so-called left. Now, I would pause the idea that ideas themselves and thoughts uh, about philosophical principles are abstractions. That is to say, you can be no more loyal to these thoughts and abstractions uh, than you can be to, hmm, I don't know, a Snickers bar. Although I suppose you could loyally eat a Snickers bar, but that's neither here nor there. So what you really see when people on the right or left, just as an example, fight is a manifestation of in-group, out-group thinking, tribalism. It's more about loyalty to the group than it is to some set of abstract principles. Now these people, of course, are espousing certain abstract principles, but no individual member of either group the right or the left, knows what the other individual member might be thinking at any given time beyond what uh, that person might be uh, speaking out in public. So there's no way to, uh, to ally oneself along specifically those lines. It's just not possible. So you just end up with a kind of uh, more advanced form. It's a more advanced form of tribalism. 
you show allegiance to your clan, your political party. Nationalism is a uh, potentially a very dangerous form of uh, primitive tribalistic uh, thought and action. And sometimes you get a melding of these things. So, for example, National Socialism, uh, Nazism. You have a melding of uh, modern nationalistic tribalism with uh, pseudoscientific uh, perceptions of uh, genetic relatedness. So you have sort of a melding of uh, the second, uh, well, I would say the second stage of tribalism and something entirely uh, different. So it, it, it stands to reason that tribalism uh, is not a good thing. I say this now in modernity. Uh, certainly tribalism in the past had served some interest. Uh, preservation of one's own kin and clan just unfortunately as male disposably apparently did serve some interest at least the preservation of the human race to some extent at least it's not something I can readily contest but I would maintain that tribalism in its current form serves no purpose whatsoever uh, very very little at least you uh, tribalism is the cause of wars it, the us them thinking the, the in-group out group the rejection of the other, because the other isn't your skin uh, pigmentation, or the other speaks a different language. Uh, the other comes from a different country. Of course, the silliness of nationalistic tribalism is that we have no control over where we're born, so that's a bit, uh, a bit silly. Um, but tribalism is, in its modern sense, and modern form, and modern presence, a dangerous thing. We, quite frankly, don't need it anymore. That is what what's going on. That's, that's what racism is. It's just tribalism. Uh, that's all that is. Now, I needed to explain that point a bit before I moved on to the next point uh, that I want to make, uh, namely this idea that I brought up of Korean men getting angry that wet, quote-unquote, Western men are taking their women. And you see this, and it was pointed out to me all over the place. Yes, indeed, you do. You see it all over the world. You see it in every country. You see it in the United States black men getting upset that white women are selecting, sorry, white men getting angry at that white women are selecting black men, and black women getting angry at black men for selecting white women, and so on and so forth. It's, it's never-ending. It can be applied to any ethnic group. It's pretty irrelevant which one. And so, yes, you do see this. Um, you also see this uh, women getting angry, but this isn't quite the same thing. After all, women don't compete with each other in the same dominance uh, hierarchy that men do. They have a different kind of competition. Essentially, it's a beauty contest. Um, but what women are doing when they get upset that, uh, quote-unquote, uh, some white woman is stealing her, quote-unquote, black man, is simply a reaction, uh, a, a base reaction, to her gut instinct, her feeling that uh, someone is taking away my male resources. When women get upset uh, for moving away from the tribe, it's because the most immediate um, resource uh, is being taken away from her. So, and women are most concerned with procuring, procuring resources for themselves uh, above all else, male or otherwise. So that's what kind. I mean, yes, we see this all over the world. The actual point I want to make, however, is quite simply that uh, what we actually see going on with uh, Korean women is nothing else but hypergamy, uh, pure. In Korean society, for example, there is a cultural mean which dictates that uh, lighter-skinned people have, or at least, or have the perception of having, are perceived as having higher status. Korean women, in turn, apply this to particularly white Western foreigners and, uh, using their own hypergamous instincts, assess them as such. So they choose, they choose uh, these men based on their own hypergamy uh, for the purposes of their own uh, perception of their greater status. And it might be as well, though certainly not uniformly, that uh, Westerners tend to have, I don't know, more quote-unquote masculine builds, whatever that means. Um, so they might find that also more uh, indicative status or of the protector, provider, who knows. So this is certainly an, 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 a manifestation of hypergamy, there can be no doubt. 
Um, but the thing that really needs to be stressed, and it's so funny how women are simply they're, they're, they're simply freed from all responsibility. It's, it's, these women are choosing these relationships with these men. I'm not going to judge the character of these men one way or another. I don't know them as individuals. And like I said, I think a lot of the report is cooked up and bullshit. But the simple fact is that these women are making choices. And throughout the world, no matter what society is, women uh, abdicate responsibility. And men are all too willing to allow them in to abdicate uh, responsibility. Um, so, for example, feminism ruined women. But the fact that people constantly forget is that women allowed feminism, politicized feminism, to take place. No one forced it on them. They accepted it, and they accepted the benefits that politicized feminism, feminism brought with it. Uh, so, uh, th this, this constantly desire to remove women from their, the responsibility of their own personal choices. Uh, it's, it's incredible. And we see it take place across the board in all sorts of countries. We see it taking place in Korea. No, once again, it's not unique to Korea. I happen to be covering this report. But getting back to the heart of the matter, yes, racism is simply tribalism, one of the most primitive kinds of tribalism as opposed to more modern varieties of nationalism. Or political ideology and that's what we see but that coupled along with the tribalistic fear of the other or distaste of the other uh, in-group loyalty and male dominance hierarchy competition uh, creating uh, emotions and feelings of jealousy towards uh, the other male the the outgroup male acquiring reproductive uh, what what Korean men view as their own reproductive resources. And this is their, uh, their primary concern. Uh, once again, women are freed from responsibility. They're somehow um, players on the stage, but they're not actually playing. It's very, very odd. And it, it, it always occurs to me over and over how often we see this, this paradigm. There's never any paradigm. Women do dodging and ducking responsibility. Feminism, it's, women were, were conned and duped by feminism, and of course all these Korean women are conned and duped by these men, because the Korean women certainly don't know any better. I mean, it's, it's becoming a sad trope, but uh, it certainly needs to be addressed. Once again, this is not un unique to Korea, although there are certain cultural uh, means in Korea, such as having lighter skin. Once again, that's also not unique to Korea, but South Korea, but you see that influences uh, females' hypergamous instincts in choosing uh, the males they decide to partner with. And I guess that's all I really have to say on that topic. I hope I clarified some things about, uh, once again, all these videos talking about racism this, racism that. Folks, we really need to break it down to the core of what's going on. And, but as Poolman said, uh, the guy who originally posted the response, the um, South Korea expert, as I would call him, uh, people don't tend not to think of these things on a conscious level. In fact, in most of these, I saw a lot of commenters on my channel, uh, new to my channel or new to the videos, who were completely unfamiliar with the kind of terminology I was using uh, and, and ideas, the understanding hyper, female hypergamy and male vaginal addiction and things like that. Um, and so obviously explaining that in, in, in these kinds of terms to a broader public, um, I dare say even televised in some fashion, say in Korea, it would really just be a, a lot, a, a loss of words. I suspect most people would either just not get it, have no idea what uh, someone who were addressing these points in this matter are talking about. So um, I think uh, I think what this might inspire me to do, and I can't promise it, I have no idea what's going to happen in the near or immediate future, is uh, really to create videos specific with, with definitions, with perhaps with some good scientific articles, discussing female hypergamy, male dominance hierarchy competition, so people, if they're new, can familiarize themselves with these things and really understand that that's what's running the game at the end of the day. That's what's running the game of the entirety of civilization and everything else. 
is, uh, well, secondary at best. Racism, tribalism, tribalism primarily. But all of these things are just, um, they're certainly not the center stage. And I think uh, educating people about this could be uh, a useful way of spending my time when I make videos. But we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching.